A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. They misunderstood. Written by my crappy writing old. They misunderstood. They misunderstood space travel. They didn't coax space and time to travel the stars. Instead, they brute forced their way around the galaxy. They misunderstood warfare. They didn't lay waste to everything that was their enemy. Instead, they had rules they fought by, then aided their enemies after victory. They misunderstood the universe. They didn't move from system to system, stripping all resources available. Instead, they went from system to system, sustainably removing only what they needed. Our species made first contact while searching for a new system to strip up resources. A mining scout ship had detected their ship nearby, a generation ship named Oxford. During the initial scans, it was determined that they were previously uncontacted by us, so we followed protocol. Scan. Now scans indicated millions of sentient life forms on the ship. No offensive weapons. Evaluate. The ship did not appear to be military or mining focused. Too big to be a scout and too small to be a base. Determine. The current position and actions of the ship did not appear to be hostile. Assess. Due to location and available resources nearby, a diplomatic approach was appropriate. Report. The scans and assessments were sent to the nearest outpost with a diplomacy coach and a standing military. Contact. This was where things went wrong. The universe is a huge place with uncountable systems, with nearly as many sentient species. It's not uncommon to come into contact with another species while they're out there feeding on the needs of yours. It's also not uncommon to run into a species that also running system to system, gathering the resources needed to prosper. As I'm sure you can imagine, these contacts frequently turn into full-on wars. Initial contact is usually a tense bit of radio chatter, followed by the arrival of military ships, followed by war. Once we were able to establish communication channels with the humans, we were bombarded with enthusiastic inquiries about us. Where we came from, what we call ourselves, what our planet was like, what our social and political structures were, what technologies we held, along with thousands of other questions. We even received a data packet with what seemed to be the entire knowledge of humankind, which was immediately sent to the nearest outpost. They were genuinely excited to be making contact with another entity, and not the start of a brutal fight like usual. It's not uncommon to encounter another species in the universe. It is not uncommon to encounter another species and have that encounter end in war. What is uncommon is encountering another species who is absolutely decided on preservation, knowledge, and cohabitation. The humans are uncommon. After poring over the data packets the humans had sent us, we had determined that they were not a threat, and the order to cooperate was passed down. Talks began between their diplomats and ours, their engineers and ours, their manufacturers and ours. They were dismayed to discover that we couldn't provide educators, artists or scientists to speak with. We learned that they took great care to avoid altering the universe while exploring the universe, using matter propulsion versus manufactured gravity wells. When they fought, they did so with rules to minimize pain and suffering versus total annihilation. They didn't remove nearby resources to hinder their enemies, versus raising entire systems to prevent resupply. They mined with care to leave the planetary bodies unscathed, versus reducing stars to black holes and planets into rubble to fall into that black hole. We also learned that they greatly valued the sharing of knowledge, creating institutions dedicated to educating their people and expanding their understanding of the universe and everything in it. These institutions did not focus on only the necessities, but frivolities as well. Courses in music, art, critical thinking, other languages, histories were all available to anyone. Classes in military tactics, logistics, manufacturing and mining were also available, of course. 
In fact, these classes heavily focused on histories and theories in addition to processes. They wanted their students to know why in addition to how. Everything we initially learned about the humans went against how the universe worked from our perspective. Why would you not use the most efficient means of travel, regardless of how it affected your surroundings? Gravity wells were easy to create and provided great speed. They created a barrier near your ship that deflected objects. Sure, they changed the orbits of planets sometimes, removing them from their systems. But so what? The universe was big. Why would you not remove your enemy from existence so thoroughly that there would be nothing left to cause a threat? Never having to deal with another hostile entity again is undoubtedly a good thing. Sure, countless number of species have been eradicated forever. But so what? The universe is huge. Why would you not take every bit of material from all the planets, moons, and stars in a system to feed and fuel your ships, consuming planets whole as much more efficient than selectively mining? Plus, you don't need to send ships to the surface, removing the possibility of running into hostile inhabitants. Sure, some civilizations get erased, but so what? The universe is huge. They opened the doors to their universities to us. They shared with us anything we wished. Military tactics, mining operations, logistics practices, technological advancements. They urged us to take courses in the frivolous areas of academia, such as human history, the effect of music and arts on a population of aggressive sentient beings, business ethics, and a course called Introduction to Sustainable Living in Today's Universe, where all heavily suggested. We were only interested in information that related to the life we knew at the time. Mine, enrich, manufacture, expand, discard, fight, relocate. As we spent time with the humans in their universities, our curiosity grew. We began to explore other courses they offered. At first, things that we thought would aid us with our conquests, such as using data and worker resources and industrial relations, and social engineering how to get what you want without asking. We continued our educational exploration into topics completely foreign to us, classes that had no connection to our operations. We learned about paintings made in Earth thousands of years ago. We learned of how music evolved from simple wooden instruments to metal tubes and strings to complicated structures of carbon nanotubes. We learned how to make physical art with dirt and dyes, we learned the histories and the languages of cultures, not only from their home planet, but also from other sentient beings that they've encountered. We learned how to cook foods for the sole purpose of eating for enjoyment. Most importantly, we learned about their mistakes. We were taught about humanity's greatest errors in great detail. We were taught about military blunders that cost billions of dollars and millions of lives. We were taught about industrial accidents that ruined great swaths of their home planet for tens of thousands of years. We were taught about failed political and economic policies that ruined entire civilizations. We were taught about how humanity brought itself to the brink of collapse, a microsecond away from extinction. The courses they taught on these subjects did not include tests or labs. They issued no homework. These courses were taught in a manner that made you understand the absolute importance of not repeating these mistakes. We learned that they used to be like us. They once did travel with no consideration to the cost. They did completely destroy enemies and employ a scorched earth philosophy. They have removed the entirety of the region's resources regardless of impact to local populations. They did all of this and worse. They did all of this and almost killed themselves. They did all of this and learned from it. They did all of this and vowed to share their experience with the universe. We learned that they did not misunderstand. We did. End of story. Story number two. No Victors, written by Voidy Boy. As humans lay dead on their planets, and our empire proving to the galaxy that the savages from the Rim Worlds were threats to us all, and were destined to end us all, 
we rallied our armies and charged. We slaughtered them, lost their planets, and hunted them down. As we neared the last of their worlds, the one they defended so ferociously, we pushed them and took their final world. The world that went through such lengths to defend was their home planet, evidently. Betting for such a rapid species that ended in its own cradle. Then we tore apart what little scraps remained and shattered their planet as an example to all of what was to come if we were not ready for another threat. Mere weeks, even days, a message was broadcasted from a shattered remains of a planet by some unknown source. It spoke in Galactic Universal and sent out its every direction. It spoke in a robotic tone, and the message was brief. You deemed us savages. You slaughtered my people. You claimed a hollow victory. But I won't allow it. We wouldn't allow that. For in the grim darkness of our future, there will never be a victor. The last line echoed in our speech because as a fall shook the galaxy and all our systems within the room were all consumed. Then, as mere days passed, more and more systems disappeared into the void. We sent out warriors, scientists, priests, and all that we could to try and stop what approached us. Those that returned spoke of space being rewritten and corrupted as a massive black wave approached us. We scoured our text searching for what it might have been. What we found devastated us. Vacuum decay. The humans in their final moments of insanity brought us down with them, along with the entire universe as we know it. As the final clock stick by, I wonder only one thing. Who were the savages here? The humans with their endless walls, unbridled cruelty, and promises unfulfilled. Or us, who never gave them a chance for security of our galaxy. Perhaps we will never know. Signal disrupted. Vacuum decay arriving in five, four, three, two, one. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope.